to Escape Wheel Watch Reviews. My name is Steve, and today we're looking at the Pagani Design PD1727, which is an homage to the Rolex Daytona with a polished bezel. This watch was sent to me for free by the Pagani Design AliExpress store. I don't have to send it back, but you all know the deal by now. That never affects my reviews. I'm always honest with you guys when I talk about the watches on this channel. So this watch may look familiar to you guys, and that's because one of Pagani's best-selling watches, the PD1644, looks very, very similar to this one. Uh, I reviewed that watch a while back and came away really impressed. I'll leave the link for that up here if you guys want to go check it out. This one is nearly identical, except for a few things. First off, the watch comes in four different very bright colorways, and they're all fully polished. The retail price for this watch is $99 in the normal cardboard flip box, or you can upgrade for an extra $10 to the bigger, fancier box. But you know, uh, these will drop in price during some sales, so probably in the $80 range would be my guess. So keep that in mind when you're about to purchase one of these things. Uh, the watch features a full 316L stainless steel case, screw down crown, screw down case back, 100 meters of water resistance, sapphire crystal, solid stainless steel bracelet, and clasp, and the ever reliable and ever satisfying Seiko VK63 Mecha Quartz keeping the time. Uh, so what do I think of this new take on the Pagani Daytona? Um, yeah, I think it's great. It, it's another solid value from Pagani. Uh, before we get into the full review, let's do a quick wrist check. And I'm wearing another Pagani. This is the updated version 2 of the PD1717. This is a long jeans homage. They updated the length of the hands. Nothing else has changed. Um, so yeah, keep an eye out for this. It's a really cool watch and it looks great on this leather strap. I will be leaving the link for this right up here. Let's get into the dimensions. So... I'm just going to measure at the bezel because it's kind of hard with the pushers here. 39 and a half at the bezel. It's probably 40 or so at the case, but I mean, it's 39 and a half, 40 millimeters. You got a thickness of 12 millimeters, lug width of 20 millimeters, 48 millimeters lug tip to lug tip. And with the male end links, you got 51.7 millimeters end link to end link. So it's a great size. I think that is unchanged from the previous Pagani Daytona. Um, which isn't really a surprise. Um, so, I mean, it wears great. You can see uh, it's pretty flat here, but uh, it does wear really nicely. I'm going to go outside right now and throw it on my wrist for you. And here we are on my 7.5 inch wrist, and as you can see, it just wears perfect. You know, these case sizes, they work for a lot of different wrist sizes. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's going to look good on pretty much everybody. And you can see you got lots and lots of uh, bling on this thing. That bezel, that's just crazy. Uh, the entire case is polished. We'll talk about that in just a second. But yeah, I mean, it, it looks it looks great. It wears great. It's very comfortable. It sits pretty flat on the wrist, as you can see here. Yeah, it looks really good. Not much curvature, but it doesn't really need it, I don't think. Uh, bracelet is fine. And uh, yeah, it feels balanced on wrist. Here we are out in some direct sunlight, as you can see. And we'll get some, yeah, I mean, when you get the sun glaring on it it's uh not very legible there's no inner reflective coating and i'm going to see if i can show it to you here even like at extreme extreme angles kind of like this here uh it does get a little bit uh just kind of like a frosty look to the glass it's kind of weird and it's pretty hard to read it so um but i mean dead on uh there's no problems reading it at all and i think it looks pretty good you do have pretty cool light play off of those sub dials there almost like an iridescent color and yeah i mean it, it just does look really really good uh very shiny and i mean it's it's a fingerprint magnet but when it's all polished up like this uh it, it looks awesome i gotta admit it looks really good but i've got a ton of straps to throw it on so uh, if you aren't interested in straps just use those little timestamps down below and skip past this part but i got quite a few for you guys so let's get to it and when you want the ultimate amount of bling you throw it on a melanese mesh strap uh, not a fan of this look also don't mind the tightness of it just too lazy to adjust it but uh yeah if you are into this yeah there you go melanese strap on a daytona mesh very very shiny and here we are on a dark green, almost an army green, Riche uh, canvas strap. I think it looks pretty good. Uh, yeah, it just it, lo it looks good. Yeah, I got no complaints about this look. A little pop of color, looks good. What do you guys think? 
And here we are on a fitted black rubber strap. I'll leave the link for this down below. This is from AliExpress. Pretty decent strap and pretty good fitment on this thing. Here we are on a simple two-stitch leather strap. This is from AliExpress. I will leave the link for this watch band and the next one, the brown one, uh, down in the description. Pretty nice bands, not very nice hardware, but uh, pretty solid straps for like four or five bucks. So, um, yeah, I just thought this looked pretty good, though. What do you think? I'm going to go throw it on the brown one here real quick. And here's that same strap, but in dark brown. It's kind of a worn look to it. Uh, but yeah, I think it does look pretty darn good. What do you guys think? I got some other straps, though. As always. Summer is in fullest effect here, so I figured I'd throw that on this nice bright blue strap. I think it looks pretty awesome. Yeah, I mean, it's a strap monster. It's going to look good on anything. What do you guys think? And here we are on a modified NATO, so a single pass. Black with the red stripe. I think it looks pretty good. Brings out the red sport text a little bit. Uh, yeah, looks good. One layer under the watch here. As you can still see, wears perfectly fine. And I think it looks pretty cool. Lots of sparkle off that bezel. Oof. What do you guys think? And here we are on a dark blue NATO strap. Two layers underneath the watch here. Still very comfortable. Pretty cool look. This is a definite strap monster. Nothing's going to look bad on it. So, yeah. What do you think? All right, so let's talk about the case finishing. So the case finishing, it is fully polished. 100% polished case finishing, tops and bottoms. Uh, the underside is brushed, as you can see there. The case back. It's a different case back than I'm used to from Hagani, but uh, very simple, polished on the outer, circular brushing on the inner. You got the little notches there for a tool to get in the into the movement if you need to. Uh, really happy with that. Pretty low profile as well, so it sits nice and flat on the wrist. The polishing here, as you can see, uh, yeah, I mean, it's pretty nicely done. I've, I don't see any of those kind of peaks and valleys we normally see on poor polishing jobs, so I'm pretty happy with the polishing on it. Same with the tops of the, the, the lugs here. The bezel itself, you can see there uh, kind of that transition area from the dark to the, the light there. You can see it's not totally smooth, so the, the bezel is not perfectly polished, but uh, it, it definitely doesn't look bad at all. Um, you do have nice deep engravings. And they do catch on, uh, like I use my shirt to kind of clean this off, and you can hear it while I run my, uh, my gloves over it. It's definitely catching on some of those engravings there. So it's not the smoothest engravings, um, but again, it's not a deal breaker. And they are pretty nicely done, as you can see here. No, no bleed over the paint or anything like that. I do have one spot right at the end of the tachymeter, which I believe is just a, uh, just a QC error. Very minimal. Uh, I didn't even notice it until I got it under macro, so not a huge deal. Uh, you can see you've got two screw down crowns here for the chronographs and then you've got your main screw down crown signed very nicely so overall the case finishing it's it's fine it's simple uh, and it's pretty nicely done so the crystal on this it's listed as sapphire we'll test it real quick and it is a sapphire crystal it is a very simple crystal there's no anti-reflective coating on it it is dead flat it does sit just a hair above the bezel but I mean, just barely above the bezel. There's really not even a chamfer on the, the corner to add interest or anything. It's a very, very simple crystal. I've got uh, no real complaints about it. It does, it's going to be really almost impossible to show in this lighting, but uh, I have noticed that at an off angles, at an angle like this, it does get a little bit hard to read the time, but when you're looking at the watch to read the time like you normally would, uh, I've got no problems with it. Right, so let's talk about the dial on this thing. So on this white one, it is a glossy dial. I don't know if I can show it to you. Yeah, there you go. So the second hand you can see reflecting off the dial there. So it is a glossy white dial, really nicely done, I think. You have dark accents on this, so these aren't just polished silver accents. Yet they're actually a dark, uh, like a dark polished. Um, so they really stand out against this white dial. I think all the other all the other dial colors uh, use silver, so just keep that in mind. This one you got really nice contrast. The indices are all applied and applied nicely. You kind of have bullet ones for all the indices except for a three, six, and nine where you just have the, 
kind of little little squares, little rectangles. Uh, I think everything is aligned pretty good. I don't see anything that's obviously out of alignment. Uh, even the the chrono second hand, I mean, it's just dead on. I know it kind of looks like it's not, but that's just the uh, the camera playing tricks on you. It is absolutely just spot on, which I was really happy with. Um, nicely sized too. It reaches right out to that minute track. Same with the minute hand, reaches right out to the minute track. You got little slivers of loom here. We'll talk about the loom in just a second. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think it looks really good. Uh, I will say. Out in direct sunlight, the hour markers, they do have a little bit of a green tint to it as opposed to the hands, which are pretty much pure white. But uh, on this version, I think since the the loom is such a small amount on the hands, uh, it's not a real distraction like it is on some other models. So, um, yeah, not a, not a deal breaker in my opinion. You have three subdials here. So this subdial over here at 3 o'clock is a 24-hour dial. The one down here, you can see the second hand ticking along, so that is your running seconds hand. And then at the 9 o'clock, you have your chronograph minute counter. My only complaint is that this one is only divided into five-minute sections, so if you're in between zero and five minutes, you are completely guessing as to what minute you're on. So uh, I know they kind of did it for the symmetry. I wish they really would have just concentrated on making this functional and put an actual minute track all the way around it. It would have been a lot better in my opinion. And uh, yeah, it would have added some more function to this watch. You do have the Pagani Design Shield, Pagani Design Chronograph, and Sport here written at the 12 o'clock. And I'm going to sit here in a second. You guys notice anything funny about that chronograph word? I never would have noticed it unless someone else pointed it out. But those O's, one is an O and one is a zero. I mean... <laughs> Uh, yeah. Uh, I wish they would proofread these things. Anyway, very minor thing, and it's something that I only noticed once someone had pointed it out to me. Um, and it, it, I just don't even notice it when I'm looking at it. Um, anyway, moving on. Uh, you do have the Japan movement down here at 6 o'clock, and then at the 4.30 you have your date complication, which blends in nicely on this white model, but it does stick out a little bit with the other dials, so just keep that in mind. Uh, otherwise, though, I'm really happy with the dial set on this thing. Very nice. It comes in some pretty fun colors, and uh, yeah, I think it looks great. Uh, I did mention the loom on the hands, loom on the indices, so I'm going to pop up a loom shot right now. And surprisingly, the dial loom is actually pretty darn good. Uh, the hands, they fade pretty much instantly, and you can see it here against a couple of the other watches in my collection. And, I mean, it just, uh, yeah, the dial holds on pretty pretty good, but just don't, don't rely on this thing to read it in the middle of the night, and uh, you'll be happy. So let's talk about the movement. So the movement in this, like I mentioned earlier, it's the Seiko VK63 Mecha Quartz. It is operated by this 3 o'clock screw-down crown. Simple, nice, smooth uh, screw in screw out action on that crown you do have a gasket down here as you can see there so that aids in the water resistance nicely signed Pagani logo it's a very smooth logo too which uh, normally you get some sort of texture on it but this one is nice and smooth uh, plenty of grip good size no problems with it first position you pull it out and changes the date second position pulls it out it does hack and then that will allow you to change the time and I mean, it's it's perfectly functional. It works great. We'll talk about the chronograph here in just a moment. So the screw in, like I mentioned, really nice and satisfying. Uh, the screw in, screw out action of these crowns, again, very, very satisfying. Positive click action there, which is, you know, that Seiko VK movement. It's got really nice feedback on both of these crowns, which you don't get from other uh, chronograph movements. Usually the first click is pretty satisfying, but then when you stop it, it's kind of a mush. And same with the reset, it's very mushy. Uh, but this, you get nice positive clicks every time you click that thing. Very, very satisfying. You know when you're clicking it. And uh, yeah, you get five ticks of the second, I believe. So really nice, smooth sweep of that second hand. And I mean, it, it works great. I've got, again, no real issues with this. Um, resetting. Nice positive click again here, and you can see it snap back dead center every time. Uh, very happy with the action on the, the the crowns. I've got nothing bad ever, really, to say about the Seiko VK63. It's been accurate. It's been reliable. It's got two to three year battery, I believe. Um, yeah, I mean, it's great. I've got no complaints with it, and again, in this one, no complaints. 
So let's talk about the bracelet. So the bracelet, 20 millimeters, it does taper down to 16 to the clasp. Uh, you have your typical Pagani clasp. This is the same bracelet that you've seen on the Submariners, on the older Daytonas, and a bunch of other watches too. So uh, it shouldn't be of any surprise to anybody, um, but we'll go through it just because, um, in case this is your first Pagani or something. Uh, so you do have solid end links. You have solid links. You have screw pins for adjusting, which I had no issues adjusting. I removed three links for my seven and a half inch wrist. The clasp is a fully milled clasp. You can see here, nicely signed with the Pagani design text there. It's a Rolex style clasp. Uh, so you got this first flip lock here, and then you've got kind of a hinged release here. It's not a button release, so it's just a hinged release there. And uh, yeah, fully milled inside, polished and brushed. Uh, this one is actually working really well for me. Uh, one of the better clasps of this style that I've seen. Uh, but, I mean, this is where they get a lot of their QC issues is in these clasps. This one works perfect, but I, it's like 50-50 for me whether this Easy Link extension works. So uh, this one actually works perfectly fine. So you pop that out. You get it like an extra quarter of an inch or so, which is really nice to have. Um, yeah, I mean, this one, again, this one works good. Yours might not. That's kind of the gamble you take with Pagani sometimes, especially on this this style clasp. Um but yeah, so, uh, but your typical flaws with this clasp are the sharp edges. So these edges up here, they're still sharp, very sharp here. Um, but otherwise, uh, it's a perfectly fine clasp. Pretty nice brushing, nice finishing, polished on the sides here. Uh, you do have micro adjust. They're just hidden. So you got to you gotta flip out your easy link, and then you can get your spring bar tool in there and move these over. You can see this is on the longest uh, setting right here, but then you do have two extras there. So um, just keep that in mind. So if you can get into that easy link, then you can use these uh, micro adjustments. If not, then good luck. Um, but otherwise, I mean, it's a fine bracelet. This one is actually pretty solid. Um, there's not too much play or anything like that in it. The brushing, I think, is perfectly acceptable. Um, I mean, obviously not perfect. Uh, polishing on the sides here, done fine. Polishing on the center links. This is where you see those uh, those peaks and valleys that we we speak of a lot. Um, I just don't. I mean, you don't really notice it on wrist, uh, but when you get it under macro like this, and you start seeing, you see that transition there. How it's got like the peaks and valleys. Um, yeah, that's it's it, that's an indication of a. a a poor polishing job but like i mentioned on wrist you never notice it it's just a very shiny shiny watch uh the end link fitment uh very solid and it looks good yeah it looks really good so there you go guys that is the pagani design pd1727 not to be confused with the pd1644 um i think this one's great it looks really good i like the dark accents on the dial that really helps um a couple qc issues a couple mistakes um, but it's kind of what you expect from Pagani Design, little tiny things that usually don't distract too much from a really nice watch. So if you guys are interested in this watch, I will be leaving a link down below in the description. That is an affiliate link. Thank you guys so much for using those links. It keeps the channel afloat. I really, really appreciate it. And uh, yeah, got lots of watches coming in for you guys because of those links. And yeah, keep on using them. I really, really appreciate it. Thanks, guys. If you guys want to see some more pictures of this or see what's coming up on the channel, uh, I will leave my Instagram account down below. And I also invite you guys to come over to our Reddit Chinese watches uh, where you get to see lots of AliExpress watches like this and some other ones here and there. But mostly AliExpress watches. Good group, good group of guys. And uh, yeah, come and join us. We're, uh, we have lots of fun over there. If you guys have any questions or comments about this watch, be sure to leave them down below. Um, let me know what you guys think of this one. I'll try and get back to everybody. And yeah, I usually do a pretty good job of that, even now still. Uh, we just hit 4,000 subscribers, so I'm thinking about doing a giveaway of uh, one of the watches that I have floating around here. So keep an eye out for that as well. Uh, thanks a lot for watching, guys, and I will see you in the next one. See ya.